can you get in and buy a property without any money? Guarantor. If you've got Guarantor available to you, it's like the eighth one in the world. I love it. I love doing these deals because it allows people to get into properties when they're worth 500 grand rather than saving for a year or two and then that same property costs 700 grand and you missed out on that 200 that you could have potentially earned and, and used for yourself. So if you are a first time buyer, if you're not a first time buyer, guarantee loans are really, really good. So if you're going to buy something for you know, 700,000, as an example, we just need to get a 20% guarantee from your parents, sibling or family member, whoever it is. So that'd be 140,000 against one of their properties. If they've got a property for a million bucks, there's no mortgage on it. Great, there's plenty of equity there that the banks can utilize. No money actually changes hands. You will have the loan still financed under your name. So you'll have to pay that full 700,000 off, but you're gonna avoid that lender's mortgage insurance and it allows that you get into the property with no deposit. And some lenders will even allow you to put the stamp duty on top of it. So you get 105% lend. So maybe it's you know, 730, there's a total lend that covers your stamp duty and bang, you're in your home with no money. If you've got 50K in the bank, what, what would I do? Well, there's a few options here. You things got things like crypto, very volatile. You've got things like stocks. Again, probably don't have the greatest knowledge on that, but um, yeah, that can also be a bit volatile as well. Over my years, it's always coming back to property and that's been the safe tool and vehicle that I've looked at. If you're on your own, 50K would be a great amount to get started. If you can get your help from mum and dad, maybe get one property using a guarantor with no money down and then use that 50K to maybe buy a second investment property. And that's one way if you're going down the investment Avenue, or if you're a first home buyer, 5% you can get into the market on your own, or look at that guarantor option too. So, I'd be looking at Australian property for sure if I was in that scenario right now. So, what's the difference between pre qualified, pre approval? Pre qualify is an assessment from us to make sure that we're going to meet the criteria that we've got your pay slips, we've done a full assessment on you, but we haven't actually lodged that to the lender. Pre approval is an official pre approval document from the lender where they have reviewed all your documents and said, Yes, we are willing to lend you X based on their certain conditions that they've got. For us, we only go for the pre qualify option because your goals and scenarios might change. If you get that pre-approval from the bank and then you find a different property that doesn't meet their criteria or your strategy changes, we can always go back to the pre-qualify uh, pre and it's not going to be a hit on your credit file. There are people out there that go to multiple banks to get multiple pre-approvals. What it actually looks like when your credit files, you've been declined by three or four different banks and then you, know, you come back to us. So we're better to do as thorough as we can without lodging to the lender putting our stamp of approval saying, yes, we're happy to proceed on this so that when you're ready to pull the trigger, you've got the right lender to go to.